You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. Good morning, I'm Carl Fitzpatrick and it's business time here on Southeast Radio. Welcome to this week's edition of Business Matters. You can follow me on Twitter at Carl Fitzpatrick or visit carlfitzpatrick.ie. Okay, let's get straight down to business. On this week's agenda, I'll be speaking to Michael Kelly of TSL Marketing about the changing trends in how business-to-business service providers are generating sales leads. And Sylvia Shannon of Travel Counselors drops by to tell us about what she is doing to grow her business in a market dominated by the internet. If there's any particular topic you would like to hear covered on the show, feel free to email the details to businessmatters at southeastradio.ie. Joining me now in studio is Michael Kelly of TSL Marketing. Michael, start by telling me a bit about your own career today, please. Sure. Well, I grew up in Dublin um, and uh, went to Turnier College and then on to the College of Marketing and Design to study marketing. I kind of knew I always wanted to start my own company and I figured marketing was the best route to go through to do that. Um, so went through uh, Comad and then was lucky enough to win a visa for the States uh, through the lottery system they have. So I went to the States and worked there for a couple of years. And that's actually where I met uh, my future business partner, David English. Uh, so we worked together in IT lead generation for a couple of years. Um, then I went off and uh, came back to Ireland, worked for Iona Technologies for a, a couple of years. And then uh, myself and David decided that we would um, take the opportunity then to start a company that was focused on uh, lead generation for the IT sector. And that's how TSL was born in Carlo back in 99. So, Michael, that was back in 1999. Would I be right by saying that that was at the very end of the dot-com boom? Probably not the best time in the world to set up a business focused on the IT sector. Yes, yes, you you definitely would be right. Um it was a difficult uh, time. I suppose initially when we started, it was a great time because it was the dot-com boom and it was exciting and there was lots of money around and lots of exciting technology companies around. And then once the millennium happened and in around 2001, 2002, the IT industry went off a, a bit of a cliff really. Um, and yeah, it did become challenging. And it was around then that we had launched our first US office as well. So. Uh, while we were getting ready to explode because our initial launch had been so positive, um, it, it did present challenges. Uh, so while we were developing new business across Europe and there wasn't much competition in our sector at that time, um, and we were developing business across North America as well, it definitely did present some uh, pretty big challenges um, in a pretty dramatic way. In layman's terms, what exactly was the business model back then? It was about helping technology companies to build new sales pipeline. So we were an outsourced company. Uh, Technology companies uh, would come to us and either the large vendors uh, would ask us to help them build sales pipeline for their channel partners, their resellers, or uh, indigenous software companies and technology companies would come to us to outsource their marketing requirements so to get us to build sales pipeline for their own sales team to close. Yeah, what was your process for doing that? Well, back in 99, a lot of the the best tactics were around things like telemarketing. So it was about picking up phones and having conversations with people uh, and nurturing then deals over time. But tele was the core way of generating conversations with people and then ultimately qualifying them down into real sales opportunities. And did you expand outside of the IT sector over the years following that? No, no, not un- until really recently, the last year or so, um, but certainly uh, in the initial years and, and uh, I guess in the, the first 10 or 11 years of the company, it was purely IT focus. And how did you go about developing that business into international markets? Well, we started out as an international company, really. So uh, from day one, it was an Irishman me and an American person, Dave, and uh, both based down in Carlo, focused purely on the Irish market. But within a year, um, with the support of the Carlo Enterprise Board and then Enterprise Ireland, we were able to expand. Uh, David went back to America, launched us in Boston, and almost overnight, we were international. What supports did you receive from Enterprise Ireland? 
Yeah, I mean, we were we were identified as a HPSU, high potential startup. Um, so it was both financial support um, and also training support. So they ran some really good training programs, uh, a great uh, sales star training program. Um, and also our first office in uh, the States was actually on Enterprise Ireland's uh, own office space there, which is real help. Now, one of the reasons I've asked you to come into the studio this morning is firstly, look, to tell us a little bit about the background to the company because it's been a real success story from a global perspective, employing almost 300 people now. But in addition to that, to have a chat to you about the landscape out there today for business to business related companies generating leads because social media seems to have had a major impact on that over the last number of years. Talk to me about that. Yeah, it has. It's been dramatic. Um, I guess. TSL is now around 14 years. Uh, we've been through a lot of, of different economic cycles. Uh, we've seen a lot of different marketing tactics being flavor of the, the month or year at the time. But certainly over the last two years, we've seen a really dramatic change in terms of uh, the results that people are getting from traditional tactics, uh, such as tele-email events and so on. And when we run, have been running uh, programs for our clients, we use multi-tactics. So it's integrated marketing, it's tele, it's direct mail, it's email, it's web. And obviously over the last couple of years, we've built in social. What we've seen and has been a real shock for us over the last two years is how dramatically the results from all of the traditional tactics have fallen off and how we've been able to use um, the social media element uh, to drive not just those campaigns, but to drive our own business. And that's been the real changing point. So nowadays, uh, again, we're a, a global company. So yes, we've 300 or so staff worldwide across seven different locations. So it's about driving that international business. And the jury is very much out on using social media in a B2B setting. We seem to have cracked the nut for our business. We find it hugely effective um, and it's just been a really effective way of, of driving new sales opportunities and new conversations uh, with future customers in multiple markets. But before we do go in and discuss the effects that social media is having, I'd like to just have a quick chat to you about some of the traditional methods and to find out exactly by di dissecting them as to why they're not working any longer. Let's start with telesales. Why isn't that working? Yeah, it's a great question and, and I, I saw a great answer to it in the Financial Times uh, just a couple of weeks ago. There was a brilliant article uh, that outlined exactly why and it's the fact that very few people are at their landlines anymore or even answering their landlines. Uh, it is a mobile phone culture. We're all using our mobile phones and even uh, if you can get hold of somebody's mobile phone, can you get them at a time to speak? So that's had a massive impact in terms of the results that everybody is seeing from Tele. Another popular method of marketing has been direct mail. What are your thoughts on that? I, I still believe in direct mail. I think it can drive great, great results. I think the big problem at the moment is that people simply don't have budgets to do great direct mail. The money simply isn't there. In relation to events, I've seen myself over the last number of years from attending them countrywide that the numbers have certainly just fallen off, the likes of trade shows and conferences. Is that the main reason behind why events just aren't working as well as they have been in the past? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a similar reason that the real problem is that uh, people are not making decisions as quickly, so the return on investment is lower, and things like events can just end up being too expensive, uh, too expensive a way to, to do business development. And I suppose finally in relation to email marketing, what impact do you think that has had on that over the last number of years? Yeah, again, I mean, email when it works can be great. The, the trouble is so many emails getting caught in spam traps, but also getting hold of people's email addresses in the first place and getting the permission to email them. So one of the things that we see a lot of the time is, OK, my big challenge is getting people's email addresses. How am I going to get them? Well, I'll hire a telemarketing agency or use my internal telesales people to call those companies and get the email address. Well, there you're using a very expensive method of tele to generate what's meant to be a very low cost way of marketing. We're going to take a short commercial break now. Michael is going to stay with me. When we come back, we're going to be discussing what leading business to business service providers are doing to generate sales leads in this digital age. So stay tuned.
Welcome back to the show. Michael Kelly of TSL Marketing is here with me in studio. Michael, before the break, we were discussing the traditional approach that business-to-business service providers were taking to generate sales leads. How have social media platforms changed this in recent years? I think there's a number of advantages of social. Um, Firstly, it won't revolutionise anything if you do it the wrong way. And as I mentioned earlier, the jury is out on social media for B2B marketing. And um, the reason that it's worked for us is because we tried lots of different things. We tried lots of different approaches and the first few failed and they failed badly and we stuck at it and we kept trying different things. And now at TSL for ourselves, we have a recipe that we found to be very effective. And I think the big thing that changed it for us was we've split social media into pull and push with pull being getting people into our network, into our communities across different things like Google Plus and LinkedIn and Zing. And only then do we start pushing out content. For some of the social media sites out there, I just want to focus on one being LinkedIn. What should people do in their approach to LinkedIn in order for them to be able to develop connections, number one, and secondly, to turn it into lead generation, number two? Yeah, I think, uh, let me just talk about how we've done it and how we've made it work. Um, The first thing that we realised with social media was that we and everybody else seem to be throwing out water into the desert. If you don't have a critical mass of connections across your platforms, and in this case uh, LinkedIn, then no matter what you do, no matter what push you do, no matter what messages you send out, it's just going into a desert. So if you only have... 200 or 300 connections that is not a social media strategy so what we did was firstly we focused on making it a systematic process we systematically built up very large connections within our target market so these are the ideal people that we know we can sell to in our different markets in our different uh, geographies once we had that um, only then did we start to push content out to those people but also We tried out different messaging and certain uh, profiles, the way a profile is written and certain messages that you send to people within LinkedIn, they will have a much higher impact and a much higher return than some sort of bland approach. So, for instance, let's start with the profile. How should somebody write an adequate profile for their LinkedIn page? I think first of all, you have to think about what is the other person going to get out of this? So when they hit your profile, if your profile is very sales focused, if it's all about, you know, I my company sells A, B and C, are people really going to want to connect with you? Whereas if you write that profile uh, in a more value based way that you're a consultant and you provide insights into specific challenges within your industry, And making sure that it's accurate, making sure that it reflects something that you can do, that's the way your profile has to be written. That's what it has to reflect. So looking for them to connect to you as a connection, how should they go about writing the message in relation to doing that? Yeah, that's absolutely key. Um, The connection request, first of all, don't use the standard text that is provided within LinkedIn. Um, You have to take the approach that this person has a challenge within their industry. So what is that challenge going to be? And that's what the text needs to reflect. Uh, So it needs to be something along the lines of, I see we both work within uh, this particular industry. Um, I thought it might be useful to connect so we could discuss future challenges within the industry, something along those lines. So let's say, for instance, somebody doesn't connect. What should you do next? I think you should move on. Um, I think there are uh, an enormous number of people out there who will connect with you um, and I think you need to focus on the bigger picture and not get caught up on people who don't want to connect or don't want to speak with you. From your experience, when somebody does connect, what should you do next? Yeah, the next ideal thing is you've got to have a a call to action. Um, What we do is we'll then respond with a message that says, thanks for connecting Clearly, we have some overlap between our different areas. Would you be free in the next ten min- uh, in the next two weeks for a 10-minute call uh, just to get to know each other better for future reference? And from your experience, what's the callback rate on that? What's the response rate? 
Yes, we see about a ten percent um, uh, rate on that. Uh, which you know, whether that's good or bad, um, we don't know. But it's it's certainly very effective for us. LinkedIn as a tool is not for every business. From your experience, what type of businesses does it suit in order to generate leads from? I think you have to have a large enough target market. I think, um, you know, some companies that we speak to, they'll say, oh, well, we can only do business with 50 companies in the entire country. Well, from that perspective, maybe you can use it for account expansion. Um, but really, the ideal companies, um, it will be uh, ones where there's a large enough segment that they can go after, but also their average sales price is high enough that they can get a return on investment because this is quite a labor intensive task. Michael, this is certainly a very new approach to generating leads through social media, especially for the B2B market. Was there something that you were doing wrong along the way that you corrected that had a major impact on your results? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the the approach that we had been taking would have been uh, the traditional one, which is you only connect with people on LinkedIn who you know in the, in the physical world, who you've met. And we had to have a real change of mindset. Uh, and we now look on that as very, very old school. So I think what really changed it for us was we made this systematic. Uh, for us, simply connecting with five new people a week or something like that is just not good enough. You've got to make it systematic and you've got to uh, be connecting with a, a large volume of people from your target market um, on a weekly and monthly basis and until you've reached that critical uh, mass you're just never going to be successful in B2B social media that's definitely what's worked most for us I suppose Michael in one way it's ironic in that your company started off with a view to developing a business for generating leads for business to business service providers out there using a traditional method then social media came along and I suppose almost outdated that particular method and outdated your way of generating clients. So you embraced social media to develop your client base again, and then it became your business model. Can you give me an example of any particular contract that you would have won recently on how this social media strategy worked out for you? Yeah, I can. Um, there's one project that we're working on right now with a very large technology company in the Middle East, and that uh, came 100% through this social media model. And really, there's no way we would have uh, won this type of business using the traditional tactics. Uh, so this is something that we initially got the conversations going through social media. Uh, we then established ourselves as a thought leader uh, for this type of thing. And this company in the Middle East uh, then eventually came back to us nine months later. Um, so we now have these projects running in Saudi Arabia and Dubai. And that's all been purely done through social media. And I think the best part of it is that uh, we are, uh, our own brand has been established with these type of large companies in the Middle East. And the brand has been established 100% through social media. If your company decided a number of years ago not to embrace social media, where do you think the company would be today? Uh, I'm afraid to answer that question, but I'm just glad we did. Well, look, Michael, thank you very much for coming in and joining me this morning, and I wish you continued success with TSL Marketing. Thanks, Carl. If you've just tuned in, you're welcome along to this week's edition of Business Matters. You can contact the show by emailing businessmatters at southeastradio.ie. Coming up after the news, I'll be speaking to Sylvia Shannon of Travel Counselors about how traditional travel agents are competing against the force of the internet. So stay tuned. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance.